Hey, it's Tina Brinkley Potts, and I wanted to jump in and talk about uh, one of the things we did yesterday in our office hours. Um, I'm really not going anywhere, but um, trying to work with my grandkids, um, you got to hide somewhere in order to do things. <laughs> um, for the last few weeks, I haven't been able to work more than two hours a day, but at the same time, um, I know how to make sure that things can keep going. And that's one of the things that I've been teaching for a long time is how to still do things even when life happens. You know, I know that there are some people who are trying to wait this thing out um, and we really do not know how long this is going to be. Uh, life will not be back to normal in two weeks, and I hope everybody knows that. There's just no possible way. Um, with battling everyone, you know, from stop going out, this, that, and the other, with all the conspiracy theories, regardless of where the hell this shit is coming from, the fact is there are a lot of people dying. Um, and you can keep trying to compare it to the flu or this, that, and the other. Whatever it is that you want to do, there are a lot of people who are losing their life. So, Life is going to change for a long time to come. Um, and, you know, I w won't jump down that tangent, but let's just talk about what you can do right now to kind of pivot. You know, that's the word that everybody's using right now, like pivot. And I really like to say just like when life happens, because even before all of this happened, what we know is that most people have been living lives of secret desperation where it looks so damn good on the outside. But really behind the scenes, it is a day to day thing. I mean, when you look at you're talking about major corporations right now who are getting huge bailouts just for what has happened over a couple of weeks. Right. So if you think about what people tell you as a small business owner, make sure you have six months of savings and blah, 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 blah. Big corporations ain't doing that shit. So like, how do they expect you to do it if they don't require big corporations to do it too? And again, I'm not really trying to go down a tangent or make anything right or wrong. That is not the point of this video. The point of this video is, is you must empower yourself to be able to adapt to what what is going on? Um, waiting while, yes, get your breath, get, 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 get back into your power, understand and grieve that your life has changed. I get that, but don't get stuck there. That's the problem where everybody says, feel your feelings. You want to feel your feelings and you get to feel them for like a day, maybe a week, but then it's time to move the hell on and to really get back into doing uh, uh, figuring out a way, um, you know, who, I think it's Marie Forleo who says everything is figure outable, right? So you got to figure it out. If you're going to keep waiting for somebody else to figure it out for you, it's not going to work. So it's time to do that. And one of the ladies who was on our office hours yesterday made a really great um, comment. She was like, Tina, I really love how you do these office hours because you're not going to just show us. You give us the will and so that we can do it in front of you. And she was like, I've never really seen anybody do that. Um, and you just took the time. Like yesterday, office hours went for about three and a half hours. Um, and really um, for yesterday, I think I did, uh, I don't know how many different people, but there was several questions. Uh, there was probably only three different people who had several questions that needed to be answered. But it, we did three and a half hours because if I sit there and keep training you how to do it, but you never take the time to practice doing it, you will never do it. And that's one of the things that creates overwhelm. You know, people say that... Um, you know, when they talk about the fears in life, right, they say that the fear of dying, I think, is number one. And then the fear of public speaking is number two. Well, there is an unspoken fear that most people don't talk about. And that's the fear of being made wrong. We all want to be right so bad that sometimes we know that there's something we need, but we don't do it because if we don't do it just right, then we start thinking that, other people are going to judge us. And 
there has to come a time to let that go. That's number one. Number two, that's what happens when it comes to technology. Everyone says, oh yeah, I know how to do that. Oh yeah, I know how to do that. But then when you get behind the scenes and you actually see, they don't really know how to do it. But because our school system has graded everybody on getting A's and memorizing and all of that good stuff, um, when it's time to apply it, If you can't get it just right, then it makes you feel less than. And I got to tell you that we have a safe place where no question is made to feel less than. Um, Every question gets an answer, even if it isn't during our office hours, we will come back and answer. So like a lot of times some of the questions are the same for everybody. So if they're the same for everybody, we will go into one of the people's um apps in, into their actual system and show them how to do it in their system, but then it satisfies 10 questions that were the same. Um, but either way, somebody is always going to answer these questions so that you guys can move forward in your business. Right now, um, every business should have an online component. Um, that isn't really just because of the crisis we're in now. It's because of where it was going. One of the main reasons why I started doing the speaking engagements and before this happened, um, between, uh, March and May 15th, I had like 42 different speaking engagements booked. 42 different workshops to talk about how to grow your business when life happens. One of the reasons I agreed to do this, um, being a black woman, um, a black woman, I knew and saw the trajectory of where things were going to go even before the, this virus, before this crisis, um, on all of the job losses and the differences between who was going to survive and who wasn't. And so I agreed to go and really start champion. And one of the groups that was going to be hit the hardest is black women. Now, uh, you don't got to take my word for it. Uh, There was a presidential candidate who kept talking about the effects of technology. Now, let's not make technology bad because evolution and expansion um, is, is going to happen. However, just like, you know, when we used to ride bicycles and there was a horse and buggy and now we drive cars like there there needs to be evolution. So some jobs, the way that they were, were are going to change um, and are going to change fast. Some of those jobs are customer service, retail, um, human resources. Uh, as you can see, retail's already doing that. There's malls all around the country that are shutting down um, and and. Uh, And with this crisis, you can see how many people, um, how many businesses, large businesses that are already adapting to a almost a completely online model. Um, So it really takes time and and it really needs it's an understanding of needing to do that. The reason that human resources is going to be um, affected um, is because of AI Uh, now with computers being able to. Um, read and decipher so much information so fast that literally you can type in a question and get an answer. Um, uh, uh, Bots, voice bots sound just like humans now. So there won't be a need for a lot of human resource directors. Uh, There will not be a need for a lot of customer service. So let's say a company had a customer service at customer service positions, and let's say they had 20 in their company, they will be able to go down to five and the rest be bots. And those five manage what, you know, correcting the questions of those bots. This was happening anyway. Um, Now it's just kind of speeding it up. So like if you have a business or you have a, um, Um, or you've been looking to go into business and you really need to get organized, Um, there are ways that you can get started to getting super organized and get super efficient starting now. Um, And 
all you have to do is like you can inbox me and you know somebody it might not be me because again like I said I'm working maybe two hours a day but I have people who are answering some of these questions for me who are jumping and helping me uh, while I'm doing some things with my family but at the same time you just got to know that this works um, what I can tell you personally for me um, over the years, there's a lot of things that I was telling when I was doing these speaking engagements, like how um, I was growing businesses even when I was running into uh, uh, crack houses and pulling people out, like when I would sit bedside when somebody was dying, but I was able to use technology to help me still grow or to help my clients grow. And then I could work in the middle of the night if I needed to. So during the day, while I was with someone for whatever reason, I would be able to um, still, you know, get things done. Not saying everything was perfect, but I was able to still get it done um, with the technology was my intellectual property with the things that I've designed. I can honestly say we've done more. I've helped more than a hundred million in business, maybe even more than that, but I just hadn't been keeping track. Like I can say literally when it came to processes and developing a strategy and making sure an event was sold out or whatever, that it was me and it was what I designed not taking away from the company, but most of the times people came to me when they were in distress. They came to me when they worked with the nice, pretty people who said that this was going to work. And then it did it for, you know, they tried two or three of them. And then somebody says, you know what, when you desperate, go to Tina. And so they would come to me then. They didn't come to me first. They waited until they were desperate. That's okay. But I'm just telling you, like, if you're tired and you really are ready to put the work in and you're really, really ready to do what is going to work now, right? Like, see, there's companies still getting clients now, even though everybody is thinking because they got to stay home that they can't do it. Um, we've, we've, we've talked about, I mean, I, I went over with some cleaning companies just the other day. Uh, residential cleaning companies, what they need to do in order to still be in business, but also to protect themselves. Because, you know, my motto is people, my motto is people before money. And so like the hell was everything at the end of the day. If you don't have your health and you aren't living, uh, the money is just not going to do shit for you. So you know, you got to remember that at the end of the day. So how do you keep yourself safe? If you're, if you're essential and you're helping someone, uh, clean their homes or whatever, if you're going to do this and you're going to take the risk, then you got to make sure you're doing everything, uh, to protect yourself and your employees. So that has to be first. And we talked about the models there, like what what is recommended, like really understanding the truth, knowing that if you're making makeshift um, masks, does a makeshift mask give you What kind of coverage does it actually give your employees? And so we talked about that. When you see the thin ones that are kind of like white on one side and blue on the other, how much does that really cover? And what can you do to amplify that? So there's a lot of there's a lot of moving pieces in all of this. But the first thing is um, accepting that you got to adjust now and that you want to make the change now, even if they try to open the country back up and stupid enough to do it. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, you can tell I have opinions about it. Then they're going to end up needing to shut it back down. If you've worked in any kind of health arena long enough to know, you know about what happens behind the scenes with all of this. So we all know that this is going to take a while uh, to really get it cleaned up and to make it safe for us to have everyday living just like we used to have. So get over it. Um, And really, again, begin to adjust to where you are now. So uh, if you need help doing that, you want to send us a message. You want to DM me wherever you're seeing this video so that 
we can show you like there's ways that you can start right now with no money at all. Um, and, and we've decided to do that even with um, some of the, the partnerships that I've had. We've decided to add some levels into this so that people can get started now and they can see why it's successful. A lot of times we are so um, we're on this ham wheel of I got to get, I got to get it now and I got to get it now that we never set up the things that help you get off that hamster wheel so that you don't have to do that all the time. And I want to help you with both. So like I, we teach you how to chunk time, how to, okay, I got to worry about today money for three hours today, but then for two hours today, I need to worry about my long-term goal and getting both of them set up together. And this is one of the reasons why I'm able to help people go from zero to multiple six or seven in 12 months, because this isn't a shot in the dark. We're doing the plans. We're, we're looking at traffic. How do you really get traffic? Not where you're just sitting on social media and it looks big. Like how do you really get people and move them through the buying process so that they are buying? And uh, I just want to tell you, people are still buying, you know, and think about your activities now. When you're sitting in front of those computers or you're sitting in the house and you're, if you're not doing anything, what are you doing to manage your time? You're on the internet. Like you got things coming to you. When you go to one of these stores that are allowed to be open, do you, are you just going to the store to get the food or are you getting other items like we're still shopping we're still buying and you still need services and the world is going to have to adjust so um adjust now uh and again if you need help just dm us there's there's a lot of people who are you know changing the way they do business just so they can help more people because this isn't just about business now it's about a global community being able to survive. And so you got to adjust when life happens and life has happened in a major way. I've been used to doing that all my life. Um, adjusting, you know, you got to adjust when life happens. You got to pivot. Okay. You know, don't be so rigid about what you're doing. Okay. You can pivot here. You can pivot there. You guys can do this. So if you're tired of making it look like if you're tired of sitting there and feeling like, this isn't going to work. You need to work with someone who's going to tell you to get, you know, who's going to be willing to have those hard, difficult conversations with your ass and um, let you be mad with them, like not really care who, who isn't um, so uh, caught up in their emotions that every time somebody says boo that they move. Like, like because when you're scared, you lash out sometimes not saying that we accept it, not saying that you get to get away with it and you're not going to have to come back and apologize. But at the end of the day, you need people who aren't afraid to help you through when you're afraid. Like you need people who are going to stand and show you this is the way. This is how you do it. No, it might not work perfectly, but it's going to work if you don't give up and just sit there. So um, I'm off my soapbox today. Um, and, uh, I see my granddaughter back at the door. So she was like wondering, where did I go? Uh, so I better get off, but I'll see you guys soon. Bye.